So it's a little chilly outside, but it's warm inside. So thank you for being here. Good morning, and thank you for being at our remembrance ceremony. <clears throat> I want to especially thank the DEA special agents for that powerful bagpipe procession. There's no finer way to start a ceremony than with them. <clears throat> My name is Mike Turpin. I'm the chair of the Oklahoma City National Memorial and Museum Board of Trustees. I'm very proud and pleased to be here this morning with you. I especially want to thank the people of First Church who have been our partners for 21 years. And thank you to them for once again opening their doors to us this morning as we moved inside instead of outside for pretty obvious reasons. <clears throat> This sanctuary was built because of what happened on April 19, 1995, as this land-run church was determined to rebuild rather than succumb to the forces of evil. So you're sitting in a very special place. Several special guests are with us here today. In fact, you're all very special guests. But specifically, Assistant Attorney General John Carlin, National Security at the U.S. Department of Justice, John Carlin oversees the National Security Division at the Department of Justice, which helps to coordinate the domestic terrorist prosecutions and co-chairs the Attorney General's Domestic Terrorism Executive Committee. Assistant Attorney John Carlin. Also with us, Undersecretary Suzanne Spaulding, National Protection and Programs Director at the Department of Homeland Security. She oversees coordinated operational and policy functions of the offices of cybersecurity and communications, infrastructure protection, biometric identity management, cyber and infrastructure analysis, and the Federal Protective Service. A lot of responsibility, obviously. Both the Assistant Attorney General and the Undersecretary are participating in the second annual National Summit on Homeland Security at OCU Law School here today. I appreciate them being with us. It's always good to have our federal brothers and sisters with us, as they have been from the very beginning. Locally, I expect the universe to where we live right now. Police Chief Bill City and Fire Chief Keith Bryan are with us this morning, as they always are. Governor Mary Fallon and First Gentleman Wayne Christian, my good friend Wayne Christensen, are with us, as they always are. Also with us is Governor Frank Keating, who has a very special relationship with this sacred ground here and across the street. Mayor Big Cornett with us once again. You'll hear from him in a few minutes. Members of the Billings Montana Chamber of Commerce are here studying the Oklahoma City story, if you will, the renaissance the whole country has seen right here in Oklahoma City. And most importantly, our survivors, family members, first responders, law enforcement, and friends of those who were killed on April 19, 1995. One person <clears throat> not with us today is our good friend John Hansen, who passed away this past Friday. John was the spokesperson for the Oklahoma City Fire Department at the time of the bombing. In the days and months following, he became a reassuring voice. We remember John this day, and our thoughts are with his family, friends, and fellow firefighters, many of which are with us here today. As an additional remembrance of the rescue efforts, a restored 1995 Oklahoma City fire truck will be parked in front of the museum today. A poster-sized card of former Assistant Fire Chief Hanson will be at the truck for visitors to sign, and that card will later be given to his family. So please participate in that opportunity when you go across the street. Someone who recognized John's talent with the media in keeping everyone informed after the bombing is our own Oklahoma City mayor, whose career back then was in television. Like so many of us, he will tell you this day changed his life 21 years ago, forever. And since then, he has been part of our city's transformation from tragedy to triumph. 
with a culture he describes as one that, I quote, dares the world to pull us apart. The mayor's always believed that 21 years ago, our darkest hour became our finest hour in how we responded, the Oklahoma standard. It has been this spirit that the mayor has talked about been the spirit of this community the past 21 years as to why he personally, I'm talking about Mayor Mick Cornett, chooses to remember April 19th, 1995, rather than ever forget. And that's what we're about here today. We, we, we're here because we choose to remember, never forget, always remember. He joins us today to read our mission statement. I'd like to welcome to the podium our own mayor, of the great city of Oklahoma City, Mick Cornett. So I'm turning the page right here. Okay, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. It's a special privilege to be before you today. Thank those of you who came out this morning, those of you who might be watching us on television at home. I can remember that it rained on this date 21 years ago, and it is so appropriate that we have returned once again to remember those that we lost. I want to read the mission statement of the memorial to you, and I ask you to listen to each and every word and how these words continue to resonate here years after they were first written, but as they continue to remind us of why it's important together on this specific date. We come here to remember those who were killed, those who survived, and those changed forever. May all who leave here know the impact of violence. May this memorial offer comfort, strength, peace, hope, and serenity. Will you please join me now in 168 seconds of silence.
us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we come to you this day with hearts full of emotion as we recall the events of 21 years ago, which not only changed our city, but our nation and our world as well. We remember with heartfelt love and devotion the victims who lost their lives on that sacred ground across the street and the lives which were changed forever. We remember with fondness all those who helped to restore and rebuild after that fateful morning, which was filled with hope and beauty that tragically turned dark. Today, with resolute hearts and minds, we come before you asking for your blessing. Send forth the power of your Holy Spirit to lead and to guide this great city and state that with resolve in our hearts, we may work to end all violence in our society, in our lives, and indeed in our world, that all terrorism in all forms, be they homegrown or international, may be laid to rest, that mankind may truly work for peace and harmony amongst all peoples, that motivated by the blessedness of your divine Son, the world may truly know the peace he came to bring, and in doing so, may love one another as brothers and sisters and work to establish your kingdom on earth until the day of days dawns and all is made just and right. In this hour, Eternal Father, come and abide with us, be present to us, and make our hearts, which still ache with the loss of life, still have the pain and sorrow, and still have the challenges of this tragic event be made whole. May our remembrance of this day be a means of honoring those who went before, acknowledging those who bravely served, and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of hope until we are united with our loved ones and with you, the eternal God, who lives and reigns supreme as the God of all peace, abiding in your glory. We ask these things in the name of him who is peace, Jesus the Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Now will you please stand for the presentation of the colors by the combined honor guards of the Oklahoma City Police Department, the Oklahoma City Fire Department, and the ENSA Departments, followed by the singing of our national anthem by Carmen Bond. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming.
Thank you, Carmen, for your beautiful tribute to our country. Thank you, Father Oswald, for providing a blessing. Parenthetically speaking, if you don't mind, many people who visit our memorial and museum walk across the street to St. Joseph's Old Cathedral, where Father Oswald is the pastor. Their statue, and Jesus wept, stands as a remembrance to April 19, 1995. She, she spent many days at this site as our Lieutenant Governor, comforting family members, participating in briefings, and today she returns as our top state official. Please welcome Governor Mary Fallon. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate your leadership at the Oklahoma City Memorial and for all that you do to raise money to make sure that our memorial is very successful. And I also want to thank the Board of Directors of the Memorial for their great work and the Executive Director, Carrie Watkins. Carrie, we appreciate you. And we are very honored today to have a very special guest back in the state of Oklahoma that provided a steady hand of leadership and courage and compassion at a time right when Oklahoma needed that, and that is Governor Frank Keating. Governor, welcome back. <laughs> 21 years ago, a moment that will forever have changed Oklahoma, we will never forget what happened on April 19, 1995. And as Mike said just a few moments ago, just about 30 minutes ago, we just finished our annual Metro Prayer Breakfast in Oklahoma City this morning. But 21 years ago, that same morning, April 19, 1995, we had the Metro Prayer Breakfast at the Cox Convention Center with over 1,000 people who were down there that morning. And I remember it so well, and Governor Keating was there too. But a moment when we were going about our regular activities of the day, having our annual prayer breakfast, reading scripture, talking about faith, our dependence upon God, and to hear an incredible message from a speaker that day. But little did we know that when we left that event that morning, that we would have to lean on our faith as much as we had and to witness such a horrible tragedy that happened here in Oklahoma City. I can still remember heading back to the Capitol that morning after the prayer breakfast and getting back and 30 minutes later hearing shocking news at 9.02 what had happened at the site. And today we're back and we haven't forgotten 21 years later that there were people who suffered tremendous loss of life of their loved ones. There were people who were injured severely. And there were certainly so many men and women who faced evil with courage and stepped up to help that day. Our first responders, those who gave so generously during that moment in time that we will never forget and we don't ever want to forget. We are here today to remember those who were lost and to pay tribute to those who displayed such great acts of heroism and courage to help those who had suffered so much. And I know that 21 years later, the pain is still there. And we know that it may seem like it was just yesterday that this occurred on April 19th the same day, but it was 21 years ago. But we want the families to know, we want those who worked that day across the street to know that Oklahoma has not forgotten and that we will never forget, that we will always remember the resiliency, the courage, the compassion, 
the forgiveness, the healing that took place over the last 21 years and to remember the lives of those that were lost. And what came out of that day, that month, that year, and the years that followed was what became known as the Oklahoma Standard and something that we are very proud of as Oklahomans. And I see the Oklahoma Standard exhibited time and time again anytime there's some type of challenge for our state, where there's been a storm that has come through, or maybe even in hard economic times like we're facing now. I see that Oklahoma Standard, that spirit of not giving up, of pressing forward, and getting through whatever our challenge might be. It's become an incredible witness to the rest of the nation, that spirit, that Oklahoma standard, that people from all across the world and frankly all across our nation has certainly admired and respected in the state of Oklahoma and in our people of Oklahoma. And so today we come to remember those who were lost, to stand by those who suffered the loss, to say thank you to all those who helped in those very challenging days and weeks and years after the Oklahoma City bombing, and to also rest assured that God is in control, God knows our needs, and that we can turn to him with our faith to know that he will always have a good plan ahead of us as we move forward. And today is about continuing that move forward one day at a time, and we will always do that. So I'd like to finish today by asking all Oklahomans and whoever else may be watching from across the nation to take time today to say a prayer for those who have suffered, to say a prayer of thanks, and to ask for God to continue to bless us with his resiliency, his strength, his courage, his love, and his faith, so that Oklahoma will always continue to move forward as we have. Thank you so much, and may God bless you. Thank you, Governor. Our museum continues to be a source of knowledge to all those affected by acts of terrorism. It's our Oklahoma standard that continues showing the world how we chose to carry on with fortitude rather than live in fear. I'll never forget the leadership of Governor Keating when he brought together the community. He had the memorial service we all remember. He had his friend, his classmate from Georgetown come to Oklahoma City. Happened to be President Bill Clinton. They were friends from college. So you had the Republican governor and the Democratic president all coming together. It was a beautiful sight. President Clinton said, Oklahoma City, you broke our hearts, but you lifted our spirits. I'll never forget that feeling of all of us being together. And I think uh, in Oklahoma City, we still are. The whole nation should observe what we've been able to do in Oklahoma City. The anniversary ceremony reminds us of the carefully coordinated efforts of our city, state, and national leaders, our first responders, our faith-based institutions, and the thousands of volunteers who responded that day. This coordinated effort continues today with our memorial serving as a resource to the Federal Bureau of Investigation and their fight against terrorism. For those that remember, the FBI director was here with us last year during our ceremony. On Friday of this past week, the Oklahoma City National Memorial Museum was presented with the FBI Director's Community Leadership Award from James Comey <clears throat> for continuing efforts to counter terrorism through education and building stronger and safer communities all over the state, all over the country, all over the world. We serve as an example. It reminds us our story is as relevant today as it was 21 years ago. This place, this sacred ground, <clears throat> is recognized nationally. The work done around this event is recognized nationally. The nomination of one of the top Justice Department officials who worked the case, Merrick Garland, 
to the United States Supreme Court shows us the work done here is still of critical importance to our country every single day. While in Washington, D.C., our team from our memorial and museum was invited to the White House where President Obama handed our executive director, Kerry Watkins, a special note, a letter of remembrance that I'd like to read to you right now. On April 19, 1995, as millions of people around our country began their day, the bustle of Oklahoma City came to a halt, and our nation was shaken to its core. <clears throat> the Oklahoma City bombing claimed the lives of 168 men, women, and children, and injured hundreds more. The terrorists who committed this heinous act intended to divide our country, but instead they were met with our unwavering resolve. Guided by a strong moral compass and an inclination to do good, first responders, relief workers, law enforcement officials, and ordinary citizens rushed to the scene. Their selfless acts serve as a reminder of the power of the human spirit to unite us even in the most trying times. And because of the efforts of dedicated professionals who sought to ensure this crime did not go unanswered, the perpetrators were found, investigated, and brought to justice. We will never forget the innocent souls taken from us that day, nor will we forget the resilience their survivors demonstrated in the wake of this unspeakable tragedy. Refusing to succumb to fear, people went back to work within days of the bombing, and the years that would follow, a community of friends and neighbors came together to lift each other up. The bombing of the Alfred P. Murrow Federal Building reminds us that in times of need, Americans of all backgrounds can join in common purpose to shape a safer and more peaceful tomorrow. Michelle and I join in paying tribute to those we lost 21 years ago, and we send our thoughts and prayers to the survivors and to the inspiring people of Oklahoma City. Signed, Barack Obama, President of the United States of America. It is the continued support of our president and people around the world that reminds us that we are not alone. We are not alone. through deep water 
Now comes the most important part of our whole ceremony, remembering the 168 people who were killed. As is our custom, we ask that everyone stay here for every name to be read before we go across the street to the memorial. Thank you. We come to remember those from the Oklahoma Water Resources Board building. Trudy Jean Rigney. Robert N. Chipman. We remember those from the Athenian Building Job Corps. Catherine Elizabeth Ridley. Anita Christine Hightower. We remember rescue worker Rebecca Needham Anderson. We remember those who were killed in the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building, U.S. Secret Service, ninth floor. Alan G. Witcher. Kathy Lynn Seidel, my grandmother, Linda G. McKinney, Mickey B. Maroney, Donald Ray Leonard, Cynthia L. Brown. We remember our friends and family with the Drug Enforcement Administration, ninth floor. Kenneth Glenn McCullough, Carrie Ann Lenz, Baby Michael James Lenz III, Rona Lynn Kuner. Chafee, my sister Carol June Chip Fields, Shelley D. Bland. We remember those who were killed in the Department of Housing and Urban Development, eighth floor. Clarence Eugene Wilson Sr. 
Francis Fran Ann Williams, Michael D. Weaver, David Jack Walker, Jules A. Valdez, Leora Lee Sells, Lanny Lee David Scroggins, Antonio Tony C. Reyes, Dr. George Michael Howard, DVM, Susan Jane Farrell, Kimberly Ann, excuse me, Kimberly K. Clark. We continue to remember our friends and family with the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Donald Earl Burns, Sr. David Neal Burkett. Peter R. Avilanoza. My father, Ted L. Allen. Joe Ann Wittenberg. John Carl Van S. the third. John Thomas Stewart. Terry Smith Rees. Patricia Ann Nix. Betsy J. B.B. McConnell. James A. McCarthy II. We continue to remember our friends and family from the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Mary Leisure Renty. Teresa Lee Taylor Lauderdale. Ann Krimberg. Thompson Eugene Jean Hodges, Jr. J. Colleen Giles. Linda Louise Florence. Judy J. Fro Fisher. Castine Brooks Hearn Devereaux. Diana Lynn Day, Kim R. Cousins, Andrea Yvette Blanton, Diane E. Hollingsworth Althouse, Paul Gregory Beatty Broxterman. We remember our friends of the U.S. Marine Corps Recruiting 6th Floor. Captain Randolph A. Guzman, United States Marine Corps. Sergeant Benjamin Lorenzo Davis, United States Marine Corps. We remember those with U.S. Customs 5th Floor. 
my father, Claude Arthur Medeiros, Senior Special Agent, and Paul D. Ice, Senior Special Agent. We remember our friends and family with the Department of Agriculture, fifth floor. Rita Bender Long. Carol Sue Khalil. Doris Adele Higginbottom. Richard Dick Cummins. My mother, Dr. Margaret, Dr. Margaret L. Peggy Clark, James E. Bowles, Olin Burl Bloomer. We remember those with the U.S. Army Recruiting Battalion, fourth floor. Wanda Lee Watkins. Kayla Marie Titsworth. Dolores D. Stratton. Victoria Vicki L. Son. John C. Moss the third, Peggy Louise Holland, my daughter, Karen Gist Carr, Sergeant First Class Lola Bolden, U.S. Army. We remember our friends with the Department of Transportation, Federal Highway, fourth floor. John A. Youngblood. Johnny Allen Wade. Rick L. Tomlin. Michelle A. Reeder. Jerry Lee Parker. Renata Ann Newberry Woodbridge, James K. Martin, Larry James Jones, Michael Carrillo, Mark Allen Bolte, Lucio Alleman, Jr. We remember our friends and family with the Federal Employees Credit Union, third floor. Teresa Jo Mathis Wharton. Virginia M. Thompson. Victoria Jeanette Texter. Karen Hell Shepard. Sonia Lynn Sanders. My daughter, Christy Rosas. Claudine Ritter. Jill Diane Randolph. We continue to remember our friends and family with the Federal Employees Credit Union. Frankie Ann. Merrill, my sister Claudette Duke Meek, Kathy Cagle Linen, Valerie Joe Kelch, Alvin J. 
Justice. Christy Yolanda Jenkins. Robin Ann Huff. And baby Amber Denise Huff. Linda Colleen Housley. Sheila R. Giger Driver and baby Gregory N. Driver II. Jamie Falkowski Ginzer. Kathy A. Finley. Kimberly Ruth Burgess. Woodrow Clifford Woody Brady. We remember our friends and family with the Defense Security <coughs> Service, third floor. Robert G. Westbury. Larry L. Turner. Norma Jean Johnson. Peter L. DeMaster. Harley Richard Cottingham. We remember our visitor on the second floor, Scott D. Williams. We remember our friends and family from the America's Kids Child Development Center, second floor. Colton Wade Smith, Chase Dalton Smith, Dominique Rave Johnson London, Blake Ryan Kennedy. Wanda Lee Howell, Kevin Lee Gotchell II, Tevin DeAndre Garrett, Tyler Sandvoy, Santoy, I'm sorry, Eves. We continue to remember our friends and family from America Kids Child Development Center, second floor. Brenda Faye Daniels. J.C. Ray Cohen, Elijah S. Coverdale, Aaron M. Coverdale, and our son and grandson Antonio Ansara Cooper, Jr. Anthony. Christopher Cooper II, Dana Leanne Cooper, Zachary Taylor Chuck Bass, Danielle Nicole Bell, Miss Bailey Almond. We remember our family and friends from General Services Administration, first floor. My dad. And my grandpa. Michael L. L. Loudenslager. Stephen. Stephen Douglas Curry. We remember our friends from the Social Security Administration, first floor. Sharon Louise Wood Chestnut. W. Stephen Williams. Julie Marie Welch. Robert N. Walker, Jr. Luther H. Trainer. LaRue A. Trainer. 
Michael George Thompson, Charlotte Andrea Lewis Thomas, Emilio Tapia, Continue to remember our friends and family from the Social Security Administration. Eula Lee Mitchell, Derwin W. Miller, Cartney J. McRaven, Reverend Gilbert X. Martinez. Robert Lee Lester, Jr. Aurelia Donna Lester. Airman First Class, Lakeisha Richardson Levy. Raymond Lee Johnson. Jean Nutting Hurlbert. Dr. Charles E. Hurlbert, Thomas Lynn Hawthorne, Sr. We continue to remember our friends and family at the Social Security Administration first floor. Our uncle, Ronald, Ronald Vernon Harding, Harding Sr. Cheryl E. Hammond. Ethel L. Griffin. Margaret Betterton Goodson. Laura Jane Garrison. Mary Ann Fridzler, Don Fridzler, Ashley Megan Eccles, Catherine Louise Cregan, Gabrion D.L. Bruce. We continue to remember our friends and family with the Social Security Administration first floor. Peachland Bradley, Carol Louise Bowers, Cassandra K. Booker, Olita C. Biddy, Piola Battle, Calvin Battle, Sandra G. Sandy Avery. Pamela Cleveland Argo, Richard A. Allen, Teresa Antoinette Alexander. <clears throat> For those sitting in the back, perhaps you couldn't hear. But down here, there's a couple of babies crying throughout the uh, ceremony. And um, I'm not going to quote any poetry, but Walt Whitman once said, a baby is God's opinion that the world should go on. So thank you for having the babies here today. I can't help but say to you, we have a lot of survivors here today, but the survivors, the volunteers, the readers that are here today. We're here last night, rehearsing, if you will, practicing, going through all this. I know it takes a lot of courage to be here to do this, and uh, I want to thank you for what you're doing. They're just volunteers, but they were going to be here for all the right reasons, to remember forever what happened 21 years ago. So thank you. <clears throat> Our workers, our work is not done. It is more important now than ever before. We must continue teaching the next generation by using our new learning lab, a 
across the street. You'll see it in the museum today. It integrates systems and technology used in the bombing and recovery through science, technology, engineering, and math, a STEM-related exhibit, if you will. We interrelate all that with the history of the bombing, connecting the past with the future, encouraging students, encouraging students that weren't even born 21 years ago <clears throat> to understand the lessons learned from April 19th, lessons that we'll teach forever. As you visit the chairs today, you will see the wreaths on each of the 168 chairs that were left on Saturday when 2,000 motorcycles came here in the ride to remember. They placed each wreath on the chairs. And just last night, thousands of fans attending the Oklahoma City Thunder playoff game received a wristband, an Oklahoma Standard wristband, which asked them and asked each of us to commit to acts of service, honor, and kindness. Indeed, the Oklahoma Standard endures forever. We invite you to visit the museum today that will remain open until 5 o'clock. Admittance is complimentary today, free admission, thanks to Cox Communications. We thank New Leaf Floors for providing the flowers that adorn all 168 chairs. We invite you to come out this weekend, this Sunday, folks, for the 16th Annual Oklahoma City Memorial Marathon, the magnificent Memorial Marathon. Already 23,000 runners signed up. Come cheer on our marathoners who run to never forget, who run to never forget. They run in honor of those who were killed, those who survived, and those who were changed forever. Thank you for joining us for our 21st annual ceremony. May our Oklahoma City National Memorial Museum be a place of history, reflection, and memories that will remain and endure forever and ever and ever. Thank you for being here today.